Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. If it wasn't for Andrew's teachings, I would never be where I am today. I would never have victory. I would be living a life of defeat. It was Andrew's teaching that allowed me to develop that faith. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Tuesday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today, I'm continuing to teach on lessons from Elijah. Actually, I finished Elijah, but I'm now going into Elisha, his replacement. And the reason I'm combining these is because Elisha actually had to fulfill some of the things that God told Elijah to do. Elijah did not fulfill everything God told him to do. In the 19th chapter of 1 Kings, he told him to do three things. He was talking to him in an audible voice. And Elijah just failed to do two out of three. And yet, Elijah still was able to recover, have a relationship with God. And in 2 Kings chapter 2, he was caught up into heaven, just translated into heaven and never died. That's amazing. I've already said a lot of great things. But because Elisha did two of the three things that God told Elijah to do, I'm, I'm going into some of the things that Elijah did just to show you because I think that their ministry are really intertwined. Uh, Elisha had to complete some of the things that God told Elijah to do. So here in 2 Kings chapter 4, yesterday we were talking about the woman who was a widow. She was a uh, the wife of a son of the prophet, but this man had died. She was unable to pay her bills and the creditor had come to take her two children and she came to Elisha and basically said, you know that my husband was a godly man. He was one of Elijah, Elisha's students. And so in a sense, she was coming to him, expecting him to do something, making a demand on his ability. And he said, what have I to do? I'm not your source. What do you have? He put her attention back on what she had. I tell you, most of the time, people feel like there's nothing they can do, and they're always looking to someone else to be their answer. When the truth is, it's better for you just go to straight to God and say, God, I know that there is some way that you have given me that I can get out of this situation that I'm in. And instead of looking for deliverance to come from some person, you look for it to come directly from God. So that's what Elisha told this woman to do was, what do you have? And she says, I don't have anything but just a tiny little pot of oil. And he said, go borrow vessels from all of your neighbors. Borrow not a few. In other words, borrow a bunch of them. And he says, and when you have uh, come into your house, this is in verse 4, when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shall pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay thy debt, and live thou and thy children of the rest. Boy, there's a lot of lessons to learn right here. One of them is that don't ever make another person your source. Every one of us have something that we can do that will either provide us with supernatural provision or provide us with uh, anointing or wisdom or whatever it is that you want. And so she had to go look and see what she had. And then she had to, by faith, believe that God was going to multiply it. Boy, that's important. You know, there's this song that Lester Summerall used, uh, not Lester Summerall, Lester Roloff used to sing on his radio program, and he would sing little as much when God is in it. And it was just neat to hear him sing that. But it's true. If you do what you can do, you can take a little tiny lunch, like a, a little boy's lunch, five loaves and two small fish, and multiply it and feed a multitude. You can take this little bit of oil and pour it out. But whatever it is, it's, it's not insignificant if you dedicate it to God and give it to God. God can multiply it. God can take your lack of ability and do more through you 
than somebody who has all of this great talent and ability if you totally submit it to God. So that's one lesson that you can learn from this. And notice also she shut the door on her and her sons. In other words, you didn't want a lot of spectators. I'm sure a lot of her neighbors were wondering, why is she borrowing vessels from all of the neighbors? What is up? And it could have been that people would have wanted to come and see. And did you know some people, when they have a need or something, they call and let everybody know what the need is. They call the prayer chain at church, which if the prayer chain was truly praying the way that they should, that might be a good thing. But I can guarantee you the average church prayer chain, when you call them with some need, you have just opened yourself up to all of the criticism and the unbelief and the negative things that all these people are going to be saying. In the ninth chapter of the book of Mark, Jesus, when he saw all of the people come running together and he was dealing with this boy who had epilepsy and he fell on the ground and followed, foamed at the mouth, when Jesus saw the people come running together, he cast that demon out quickly because he didn't want all of the unbelief of those people. In the sixth chapter of the book of Mark, it says that Jesus could do no mighty work in his hometown. Not wouldn't do it, he couldn't do it because of their unbelief. So you don't want a lot of spectators. You'll find out that when Elijah raised the widow's son from the dead, he sought seclusion. When Elisha raised the Shunammite's son from the dead, she, he sought seclusion. When Peter raised Dorcas from the dead, he put everybody else out. When Jesus raised Jairus' daughter from the dead, he, he put out all the people who were mocking and would only allow the father and the mother and three of his disciples in. You don't want a huge crowd around you when you're in a fight. And some people think, no, that's what I need. I need all of their faith. The truth is most people are baptized in unbelief. You don't need all of that. He said, you shut the door, keep out all of the neighbors, all of the people who are just spectating and wanting to know what you're borrowing all these vessels for. And so you sought seclusion. It's just, this is between you and God, which is more than enough. And then she began to pour out the oil and it just began to miraculously multiply. And she filled all of these vessels and then she called for another vessel and her, her uh, son said, there isn't any more. And the moment they said that, the oil stopped. Did you know if she would have had more vessels, the oil would have kept flowing? Here's another great truth. And that is that God will only fill what you've got faith for. You know, with me, the Lord told me I was limiting him by my small thinking, and he applied that to the way I was doing my television ministry, the way I was doing a lot of things. But one of the applications he made was the way I was building buildings. I was in a building process when the Lord spoke that to me. And he was basically saying, look, you can either believe for, you know, a few hundred thousand dollars and build something cheap that isn't going to glorify God and it just barely meets your needs, or you can believe for something that's really good, what you want. And I just decided that I was going to believe for the bigger. And when we built our very first building, I spent a year and a half with the uh, architects and the builder uh, getting it ready, and we planned all kinds of things. They asked me what I wanted things to look like, and I put in wood and stone and these huge beams. Each beam is 90,000 pounds. 45 tons, and I, these are wooden beams that were brought from uh, Wyoming and had to be reassembled, and it's just what I wanted. I built what I felt like the Lord had put in my heart, and I was a year and a half into this process and had already committed to doing it before I said, what's this going to cost? I didn't consider cost. Most people will sit down and look at what they have and they will only fill up what they think that they can do on their own. Or maybe you could go get a loan and get something like that. But you know what? The Lord just told me to dream big. And so I've been dreaming big. And in nine years, we built $130 million worth of stuff debt free. It took about the, the garage. I wound up taking out a loan on it. I won't go into that story, but I didn't intend to do it. It just happened. And anyway, it, it was about 12 years that $130 million worth of buildings are debt free. And you know what? I, I could have done even more, but I mean, that was a huge increase from where I was. I get all of this from this situation. If she would have, let's say that she had 30 pots and she filled all of these 30 pots with oil. If she'd have had 60 pots, the oil would have kept flowing. If she'd have had 90 pots, they would have kept flowing. 
IT'S, it's WHAT WE PREPARE FOR THAT DETERMINES WHAT GOD IS GOING TO GIVE US. AND IF ALL YOU'RE PREPARING FOR IS JUST A LITTLE BIT AND YOU JUST ARE THINKING SMALL AND THINKING THAT SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER GOD IS EL CHIPO INSTEAD OF EL SHADDAI, AND SO YOU'RE ONLY GOING TO DO SO MUCH BECAUSE YOU AREN'T SURE THAT HE COULD PULL IT OFF. WELL, THEN GOD WILL MEET YOU RIGHT THERE. BUT IF YOU DREAM BIG AND BELIEVE BIG, GOD WILL MEET YOU THERE. THIS IS A GREAT LESSON RIGHT HERE. THE MOMENT THEY RAN OUT OF VESSELS TO RECEIVE AND CONTAIN WHAT GOD WAS MULTIPLYING, THE OIL STOPPED. WHEN YOU QUIT, WHEN YOU GET TO A PLACE THAT YOU AREN'T EXPECTING ANY MORE, THEN GOD'S SUPPLY WILL STOP. GOD IS NOT GOING TO WASTE HIS MULTIPLICATION, AND IF YOU DON'T HAVE ROOM ENOUGH TO RECEIVE IT, THEN YOU WON'T GET IT. BOY, THIS APPLIES. THERE'S SO MANY PEOPLE WATCHING THIS THAT I KNOW YOU'RE BELIEVING GOD FOR THINGS, BUT YOU JUST... MOST PEOPLE SHOOT AT NOTHING AND HIT IT EVERY TIME. YOU NEED TO START INCREASING YOUR BELIEVING. YOU NEED TO GO TO BELIEVING FOR SOMETHING BIG. Yeah, THERE'S MORE I COULD SAY ABOUT THAT, BUT I'M WANTING TO GET ON TO THESE OTHER SCRIPTURES. Uh, AFTER THIS, IT'S RECORDED THAT ELIJAH... OR EXCUSE ME, THIS IS ELISHA, ELIJAH'S REPLACEMENT, AND HE WAS JUST TRAVELING THE COUNTRY, MINISTERING, AND THERE WAS A SHUNAMITE WOMAN. AND SHE RECOGNIZED THAT ELISHA WAS A GREAT MAN OF GOD. AND SO SHE MADE A LITTLE... Uh, SHE TALKED TO HER HUSBAND, AND THEY BUILT A LITTLE ROOM ON TOP OF THEIR HOUSE. MOST OF THOSE HOUSES IN THOSE DAYS WERE FLAT ROOFS, AND OFTEN PEOPLE WOULD PUT A ROOM UP ON THE uh, ROOF OF THEIR HOUSE FOR OTHER PEOPLE. AND SO ANYWAY, SHE BUILT A ROOM JUST FOR ELISHA. AND SO ELISHA, EVERY TIME HE CAME BY THAT WAY, HE WOULD TURN IN, AND HE WOULD STAY THERE. AND SO ONE DAY... HE WAS IN THIS LITTLE ROOM THAT THE SHUNAMITE WOMAN HAD BUILT FOR HIM, AND HE TOLD HIS SERVANT GEHAZI, HE SAYS, WHAT COULD BE DONE FOR THIS WOMAN? HOW COULD WE PAY HER BACK FOR THE KINDNESS THAT SHE'S SHOWN US? AND GEHAZI SAID, SHE DOESN'T HAVE ANY CHILDREN. AND SO uh, ELISHA CALLED HER IN, AND HE SAYS, YOU KNOW, THIS TIME IN THE NEXT YEAR, YOU'RE GOING TO CONCEIVE, AND YOU ARE GOING TO HAVE A CHILD. AND HE JUST PRAYED OVER HER AND BLESSED HER SO THAT SHE WOULD BE ABLE TO HAVE A CHILD. AND SHE DIDN'T WANT IT AT FIRST. SHE SAYS, DON'T GET MY HOPES UP. DON'T DECEIVE ME. AND HE SAYS, NO, IT'S GOING TO HAPPEN. AND SURE ENOUGH, IT HAPPENED. SHE HAD A CHILD. AND SO THEIR RELATIONSHIP WENT ON FOR MANY YEARS. AND IT SAYS WHEN THE LAD, uh, THAT TERMINOLOGY, could, IT COULD BE ANYWHERE FROM, YOU KNOW, EIGHT YEARS OLD to, INTO A TEENAGER. BUT ma AFTER MANY YEARS, AFTER THIS CHILD HAD STARTED GROWING, HE CAME BACK FROM WORKING WITH HIS FATHER IN THE FIELD ONE DAY, AND HE WAS COMPLAINING ABOUT HIS HEAD HURTING. AND SO THEY SENT HIM BACK TO THE HOUSE, AND HE LAID WITH HIS HEAD IN HIS MOTHER'S LAP UNTIL uh, NOON OR SOMETHING LIKE THAT, AND THEN HE DIED. AND WHEN THIS HAPPENED, THIS SHUNAMITE WOMAN, INSTEAD OF JUST PANICKING, SHE PUT HIM IN THE PROPHET'S ROOM, AND THEN SHE SHUT THE DOOR, AND SHE WOULDN'T LET ANYBODY IN. BOY, there's, THERE'S A LOT. THIS HAS SPOKEN TO ME A LOT. THAT A LOT OF PEOPLE, WHEN THEY HAVE SOME tra TRAUMATIC EXPERIENCE HAPPEN, THEY CAN'T SHUT THE DOOR ON IT AND GO ON. THEY JUST LET THAT THING CONSUME THEM AND DOMINATE THEM. SHE HAD JUST LOST HER SON, HER ONLY SON, HER ONLY CHILD. AND SHE PUT HIM UP IN THE PROPHET'S ROOM AND SHUT THE DOOR ON HIM. AND THEN SHE SADDLED ONE OF THEIR DONKEYS AND TOLD THE DRIVER, HE SAYS, DON'T YOU LET UP UNLESS I ASK YOU TO. TAKE ME TO THE MAN OF GOD. AND SO SHE WENT RIGHT TO THE SOURCE OF WHERE THAT BLESSING, THAT CHILD HAD COME FROM. AND SO SHE WAS HEADED TOWARDS ELIJAH. AND SO ELIJAH'S SERVANT, Gehazi, SAW HER COMING FROM A LONG WAYS OFF, AND uh, HE NOTIFIED ELISHA AND SAID, IT'S THAT SHUNAMITE WOMAN. AND SO HE SAYS, TAKE MY STAFF AND ASK HER, IS IT WELL WITH YOU? IS IT WELL WITH YOUR HUSBAND? IS IT WELL WITH THE CHILD? AND THE WOMAN SAID, IT IS WELL. NOW AGAIN, THIS IS AMAZING BECAUSE SHE HAD JUST LOST HER ONLY SON. BUT INSTEAD OF JUST FALLING APART AND TALKING ABOUT HOW BAD THE SITUATION WAS, SHE WAS IN FAITH. SHE WAS GOING TO ELISHA EXPECTING A MIRACLE. AND YOU GOT TO REMEMBER, THERE HAD ONLY BEEN one, his ONE PERSON IN HISTORY RAISED FROM THE DEAD, AND THAT WAS THROUGH ELIJAH IN 1 KINGS CHAPTER 17. SO there's all, THIS HAD ONLY HAPPENED ONE TIME IN A THOUSAND YEARS, TWO THOUSAND YEARS. BUT SHE WAS BELIEVING GOD FOR A MIRACLE. AND SO the, WHEN SHE SAID, IT IS WELL, 
SHE WASN'T GOING TO CONFESS WHAT SHE SAW AND PROBABLY WHAT SHE FELT. SHE WAS GOING BY WHAT SHE BELIEVED. AND SHE REFUSED TO GIVE UP. AND SO ELIJAH, ELISHA TOLD HIS SERVANT TO TAKE HIS ROD, PUT IT ON TOP OF THE CHILD, AND uh, SEE WHAT HAPPENED. AND SO THE SERVANT, HE RAN TO THE HOUSE. HE DID THAT, BUT THE CHILD DIDN'T ARISE. AND HE CAME BACK AND TOLD ELISHA, HE SAYS, HE HASN'T RISEN UP. AND THE WOMAN FINALLY CAME TO ELISHA, AND SHE REFUSED TO LET HIM GO. SHE SAYS, I'M NOT LETTING GO UNTIL YOU COME AND YOU PRAY FOR MY SON. SO ELISHA WENT BACK, AND HE ACTUALLY WENT UP INTO THE CHAMBER THAT WAS HIS CHAMBER, AND THEY HAD LAID THE CHILD UPON HIS BED, AND HE LAID ON TOP OF THIS CHILD AND PUT HIS HANDS UPON THE HANDS OF THE CHILD AND HIS MOUTH ON THE CHILD'S MOUTH, HIS FEET ON THE CHILD'S FEET. HE LAID ON TOP OF HIM, AND HE PRAYED. AND THEN HE'D GET UP AND WALK BACK AND FORTH IN THE HOUSE, AND THE CHILD STARTED TO GET WARM. AND EVENTUALLY, HE DID IT AGAIN, AND FINALLY, THIS CHILD WAS RAISED FROM THE DEAD, AND HE WENT AND DELIVERED THE CHILD UNTO HIS MOTHER. HERE AGAIN IS THE SUPERNATURAL POWER OF GOD OPERATING THAT SAME POWER THAT OPERATED THROUGH ELIJAH IN 1 KINGS CHAPTER 17 NOW PERFORMED A SIMILAR MIRACLE WHERE YOU RAISE THE SHUNAMITE SONS FROM THE DEAD. MAN, THAT IS POWERFUL. THE NEXT uh, MIRACLE, WELL, THERE'S SO MANY MIRACLES. THERE WAS a, A TIME THAT THE DISCIPLES OR ALL OF THE STUDENTS OF THE PROPHETS WERE TOGETHER AND THEY DIDN'T HAVE ENOUGH FOOD TO GO AROUND, AND HE JUST TOOK THE FOOD AND MULTIPLIED IT. DID YOU KNOW THIS IS EXACTLY WHAT JESUS DID OVER IN uh, MARK CHAPTER 6 WHERE HE TOOK THE FIVE LOAVES AND THE TWO FISH AND MULTIPLIED IT. ELISHA DID THAT SAME THING. HE TOOK A LITTLE BIT OF FOOD AND MULTIPLIED IT TO FEED ALL OF THESE PEOPLE. Uh, AND THEN HAMAN, THE GUY WHO WAS THE GENERAL OVER THE SYRIAN ARMY, THEY HAD INVADED ISRAEL AND THEY HAD TAKEN A LITTLE ISRAELI GIRL CAPTIVE AND uh, 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 NAAMAN HAD A... um, DISEASE OF LEPROSY. AND THE LITTLE GIRL THAT THEY HAD TAKEN OUT OF ISRAEL SAID, I WISH THAT MY MASTER WAS IN ISRAEL, FOR THEN THE PROPHET OF GOD WOULD CURE HIM OF HIS LEPROSY. SO, MAN, THERE'S A a NUMBER OF THINGS WE COULD SAY ABOUT THIS, TOO. THIS LITTLE GIRL COULD HAVE BEEN SO OFFENDED THAT PROBABLY HER FAMILY WAS KILLED, SHE WAS TAKEN AS A SLAVE, AND SHE COULD HAVE BEEN SO BITTER THAT SHE'D HAVE WISHED THAT NAAMAN WOULD HAVE DIED, BUT INSTEAD, SHE she LOVED uh, HIM, EVEN THOUGH HE HAD TAKEN HER AS A SLAVE, AND SHE WANTED THE BEST FOR HIM. AND SO SHE SPOKE WELL OF WHAT COULD HAPPEN THROUGH ELISHA. SO NAAMAN SENT TO THE KING AND ASKED THE KING TO HEAL HIM. AND THE KING GOT UPSET, LIKE, WHO AM I THAT I COULD HEAL um, LEPROSY? WELL, ELISHA HEARD THAT HE HAD COME LOOKING FOR HEALING, AND HE SAID, SEND HIM TO ME, AND I'LL SHOW HIM THAT THERE IS A PROPHET OF GOD IN THE LAND. SO NAAMAN CAME TO ELISHA, AND NAAMAN WAS A... VERY IMPORTANT MAN. HE WAS THE TOP GENERAL IN THE SYRIAN ARMY. I'M SURE HE WAS USED TO PEOPLE BOWING DOWN TO HIM AND HONORING HIM AND SHOWING HIM RESPECT. AND WHEN HE WENT TO SEE ELISHA, HE JUST SUPPOSED THAT ELISHA WOULD COME OUT AND PRAY OVER HIM AND WAVE HIS HAND OVER THE SPOT OR DO SOMETHING. BUT ELISHA WOULDN'T EVEN SEE HIM. HE DIDN'T EVEN ALLOW HIM TO COME IN AND GREET HIM. HE JUST SENT HIS SERVANT Gehazi OUT AND SAID, TELL HIM TO GO TO THE JORDAN RIVER AND DIP SEVEN TIMES IN THE RIVER, AND THEN HE'LL COME OUT CLEAN. AND NAAMAN GOT REALLY UPSET BECAUSE THIS WAS NO RESPECT SHOWN TO HIM. Um, HE JUST WAS OFFENDED, AND SO HE LEFT IN A RAGE, AND IT WAS HEADED BACK TO SYRIA, AND HIS SERVANTS FINALLY SPOKE TO HIM AND SAID, LOOK, IF THE PROPHET HAD TOLD YOU TO DO SOMETHING HARD, WOULDN'T YOU HAVE DONE IT? AND HE SAID, YES. AND HE SAYS, WELL, HOW MUCH MORE IF YOU JUST DIP IN THE JORDAN RIVER. HE SAYS, WELL, THE the RIVERS IN SYRIA ARE BETTER THAN THIS JORDAN RIVER. HE JUST HATED EVERYTHING ABOUT IT. BUT FINALLY, HIS SERVANTS IMPOSED UPON HIM, AND SO HE WENT DOWN AND DIPPED IN THE JORDAN RIVER uh, SEVEN TIMES. AND THE SCRIPTURE DOESN'T SAY uh, EXACTLY HOW IT HAPPENED, BUT IT SAYS WHEN HE CAME UP THE SEVENTH TIME, HIS FLESH WAS RESTORED, IMPLYING THAT THERE WAS NO CHANGE IN THE FIRST SIX TIMES HE DIPPED IN THE WATER. IT WAS ONLY ON THE SEVENTH TIME. BOY, HERE'S A LESSON THAT YOU CAN GET FROM THAT, THAT SOMETIMES IT TAKES PERSEVERANCE TO SEE WHAT GOD IS WANTING TO uh, DO IN YOUR LIFE COME TO PASS. AND IT DOESN'T ALWAYS JUST PROGRESS, YOU KNOW, AND LITTLE BY LITTLE. SOMETIMES YOU JUST DO THE RIGHT THING, AND THEN, BOOM, ALL OF A SUDDEN, THE MIRACLE TAKES PLACE, AND PEOPLE FROM THE OUTSIDE LOOK AT IT AND THINK, WELL, THAT DIDN'T TAKE LONG. BUT NO, IT TOOK QUITE A BIT. IT WAS SEVEN TIMES THAT HE DIPPED IN THE RIVER, AND IT WASN'T UNTIL THE SEVENTH TIME THAT HIS FLESH WAS HEALED. 
SO WHEN THIS HAPPENED, HE WAS SO ELATED THAT HE CAME BACK TO SEE ELISHA. AND THIS TIME, ELISHA MET HIM. AND I PERSONALLY, IT DOESN'T SAY WHY HE DID ALL OF THIS, BUT I THINK ELISHA WAS TRYING TO KEEP HIM FROM PUTTING HIS FAITH IN ELISHA. HE WAS WANTING TO PUT HIS FAITH IN GOD AND IN THE WORD OF GOD. AND SO I THINK THAT THAT'S THE REASON THAT ELISHA TREATED HIM THAT WAY. BUT HE OFFERED TO GIVE ELISHA ALL KINDS OF MONEY AND CHANGES OF CLOTHES, GOLD, SILVER, ALL OF THESE KIND OF THINGS, AND ELISHA TURNED IT ALL DOWN. HE WOULDN'T TAKE ANYTHING FROM HIM. AND SO NAAMAN LEFT TO GO BACK TO SYRIA. WELL, GEHAZI, ELISHA'S SERVANT, MAN, HE he COVETED ALL OF THIS MONEY THAT THEY COULD HAVE HAD. APPARENTLY, ELISHA COULD HAVE USED THE MONEY. HE JUST TURNED IT DOWN. SO GEHAZI RAN AFTER NAAMAN AND SAID, YOU KNOW, HE LIED TO HIM AND SAID THAT THERE'S SOME PEOPLE THAT CAME AND THEY NEED CHANGES OF RAIMENT AND THINGS LIKE THIS. SO THAT OFFER YOU MADE TO ELISHA, HE'S NOW READY TO RECEIVE. AND SO THEY LADEN HIM DOWN WITH ALL KINDS OF CLOTHES AND GOLD AND SILVER. Uh, THERE WAS SO MUCH THAT HE HAD TO SEND SOME PEOPLE TO CARRY IT. AND SO AS THEY GOT BACK CLOSE TO THE HOUSE, uh, GEHAZI SAID, NO, JUST PUT IT HERE IN THIS PLACE. WHAT HE WAS DOING, HE WAS HIDING IT FROM ELISHA, AND THEN HE HID IT, AND THEN HE CAME INTO ELISHA'S PRESENCE. AND ELISHA WAS SUCH A MAN OF GOD THAT HE CONFRONTED. HE KNEW WHAT HAD HAPPENED. AND HE TOLD GEHAZI, HE SAYS, IS IT A TIME FOR YOU TO TAKE GIFTS AND TO DO ALL THIS? HE SAYS, BECAUSE YOU'VE DONE THIS THING AND LIED IN THE NAME OF THE LORD AND LIED FOR HIM, MISREPRESENTED HIM, HE SAYS, THE LEPROSY OF NAAMAN IS GOING TO CLEAVE UNTO YOU. AND FROM THAT MOMENT ON, GEHAZI BECAME A LEPER. AGAIN, GREAT LESSONS TO LEARN THAT, YOU KNOW WHAT, WE ARE NOT HIRELINGS. WE AREN'T SELLING OUR SERVICES. YOU CAN'T BUY THINGS. AND ANYBODY WHO COVETS IT, I GUARANTEE YOU, YOU'RE OPENING YOURSELF UP TO SOME DEMONIC STUFF. FIRST TIMOTHY, CHAPTER 6, THE LOVE OF MONEY IS THE ROOT OF ALL EVIL. MONEY'S NOT EVIL, BUT THE LOVE OF MONEY IS THE ROOT OF ALL EVIL. AND IF YOU COVET AFTER IT, YOU PIERCE YOURSELF THROUGH WITH MANY SORROWS AND IT, and it HURTS YOU. SO YOU CAN'T DO THINGS FOR THE WRONG MOTIVE. SO ANYWAY, that, THOSE ARE GREAT LESSONS TO LEARN RIGHT HERE. AND GEHAZI WOUND UP BEING A LEPER BECAUSE OF WHAT HE DID. AND THEN THE NEXT THING THAT'S LISTED IS THAT THE SCHOOL OF THE PROPHETS BEGAN TO INCREASE AND THERE WERE SO MANY PEOPLE WANTING TO COME THAT THEY DIDN'T HAVE ROOM ENOUGH FOR THEM. AND SO THEY ASKED ELISHA IF HE WOULD GO WITH THEM AND THAT THEY WOULD BUILD A NEW PLACE TO HOUSE ALL OF THE STUDENTS. SO RIGHT HERE IS A BUILDING PROJECT. AMEN. ELISHA HAD A SCHOOL, A BIBLE SCHOOL, AND HE HAD TO BUILD IN ORDER TO ACCOMMODATE ALL OF THE STUDENTS. AND AS THEY WERE CUTTING DOWN A TREE, THE AXE HEAD CAME OFF OF A GUY'S AXE AND IT FELL IN THE WATER. AND HE CAME TO ELISHA AND HE SAID, MY MASTER, it was, IT WAS BORROWED, WHICH MEANT THAT HE'D HAVE TO REPLACE IT. AND ELISHA TOOK A TWIG AND PUT THE TWIG IN THE WATER AND THE TWIG SANK AND THE IRON AXE HEAD FLOATED TO THE TOP AND HE TOOK IT. MAN, THAT'S PRETTY MIRACULOUS. AND WE'RE GETTING INTO SOMETHING RIGHT HERE THAT I REALLY WANT TO MAKE A BIG DEAL OUT OF, BUT I'M GOING TO HAVE TO DO IT ON MY PROGRAM TOMORROW ABOUT uh, ELISHA AND THE SYRIAN KING. SO I'VE GOT THIS TEACHING HERE ON LESSONS FROM ELIJAH. I'VE ALREADY FINISHED THE LIFE OF ELIJAH. WE'RE NOW INTO ELISHA, WHICH IS HIS REPLACEMENT, AND WE WILL BE FINISHING UP ON THIS ON FRIDAY. BUT I ENCOURAGE YOU TO GET THIS BOOK, THE STUDY GUIDE, AND THEN OUR CD AND DVD SET, WE'RE EXPANDING IT TO INCLUDE SOME OF THIS TEACHING ABOUT ELISHA, AND I THINK IT WOULD BE A REAL BLESSING TO YOU. SO LISTEN TO OUR ANNOUNCER AS HE GIVES YOU THE INFORMATION, AND PLEASE CALL OR WRITE TODAY. If we understand how much God loves us, then healing becomes so easy to receive. You got the same power on the inside of you that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. We fight the fight of faith from a place of victory. Your life is about to change. Welcome to a new normal. I'm pleased to announce that we now have my television program translated into Spanish. We have a lot of my materials available in Spanish, but let your friends know that we're now broadcasting our daily program in Spanish. 
The reason I do what I do is twofold. First of all, God just transformed my life, and it's just like the guy that the Lord told him. He says, don't go tell anybody about what's happened to your daughter, and he, man, couldn't keep it quiet. When you get God touching you, you just want to tell somebody. You got this good news you want to tell people. But beyond that, I believe God's got a specific call on my life, and I mean, God has encouraged me thousands of times. And on November the 4th, 2014, he woke me up at three o'clock in the morning and he said, this is the reason that I've raised you up is to change people's opinion of me. And as their opinion of me changes, then they in turn will go change their world. Our partners are essential to everything we do. 53% of the people who write us and contact us don't give a thing and we send them the material. And the reason that I give my tapes away is because back in the beginning of our ministry when we were in Seagoville, Texas, pastoring our first little church, I just made a promise. I said, God, if you ever show me something that could change another person's life, I'll never deny them access to it because of finances. The initial response that I get from people who come in contact with our ministry is that they just see God in a total different light than they've ever seen Him. That causes them to respond to God. The whole motive behind Charis is 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, where Paul said, Be strong in the grace that's in the Lord Jesus, and the things that you have heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men and women who will be able to teach others also. That's been my whole thrust. And when I started Karis Bible College, it was because I could see that it was a way of fulfilling those verses. Through Karis, we go deeper with people than I can do on television or through a book or through a CD or anything like that. Learn from the successes and failures of others and explore the right and wrong ways to serve God when you get Andrew's teaching titled, Lessons from Elijah. Andrew's complete series, Lessons from Elijah, is available in a newly updated CD or DVD album and as a book and study guide in either English or Spanish. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. Or you can get these products as part of the Lessons Package, which includes two books, Lessons from Elijah and Lessons from David, and three albums in your choice of either CD or DVD, Lessons from Elijah, Lessons from David, and Lessons from Joseph. These teachings will give you the chance to learn from the successes and mistakes of three very powerful but very human men of God. The Lessons Package has a catalog value of $135, but you can receive all these valuable resources today for just $95. Today, Andrew's book, Lessons from Elijah, is available for a gift of any amount when you write or call. We encourage everyone to give because there's a blessing in giving. But if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will provide this book to you free of charge. You can become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111.